Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining today's webcast. We're excited to have you on. A few quick housekeeping items before we get started. This webinar is being recorded, and we will share the recording on our blog and also send it over via email to everyone who registered. Um, we'll save questions for the end of the webcast. But please feel free to type them in the Q&A whenever you have one. Um, the Q&A is located at the bottom of your webcast console. And if you haven't done so already, please be sure to take the poll and check out the resources that we've provided. Um, these are also located at the bottom of your webcast console. So let's go ahead and jump into today's webcast. So my name is Erica. I'm a content marketing manager at GitLab, and today I'll be presenting with Regis, our product manager. We have a lot of great stuff to go through today, um, and one of the reasons I'm really excited about this release is because it brings us another step closer to realizing our product vision, um, which is to help you go faster from idea to production. In this release, we introduced the first iteration of Cycle Analytics, which uses real data from your GitLab instance to give you feedback on how efficiently um, you and your team actually work. So I'll start by introducing GitLab, and then I'll pass it over to Regis to walk through our vision, um, go over and demo a few key features from this release, um, and he'll also share some insights into what's coming next. And then finally, we will close the session with a Q&A. So it's really hard to introduce GitLab without first introducing Git. Git is the leading distributed version control system. It allows developers to store a local copy of their source code, propose changes to it, and share these changes with others. Since each developer maintains a local copy, it's incredibly easy to work offline and merge changes later. And Git was originally designed for distributed teams that have to work together across geographies and time zones, um, but since it's actually expanded to developers who are just looking for a tool that helps them iterate faster and collaborate more naturally. So GitLab is built on top of Git, and we are an integrated set of tools for the full software development lifecycle. Our platform includes Git repository management um, that acts as your single source of truth in a distributed version control workflow. It includes code review and diff tools with tons of collaboration and workflow management features. Um, we've even built in an issue tracker with issue boards, cycle analytics, which you will see shortly, and a project wiki. And then to help you manage everything, GitLab also offers permission management, such as user roles, and level of access for those who can change your code. So most of the things on the previous slides are the things you probably expect to see. But as I mentioned, GitLab is an integrated set of tools for the full software development lifecycle. So we've built a number of great features and workflow best practices right into our product. Um, we offer built-in continuous integration and deployment system to tightly integrate testing and deployment into your workflow. We also offer a built-in container registry so you can store container images. Um, so hopefully by now you are excited and wondering how you can actually use GitLab. Thank you, Erika. Um, hello, everyone, and thanks for being there. Um, I'm Regis Fred, and I'm Product Manager at GitLab. <clears throat> so at GitLab, we want to offer you a product that can take you all the way from your ideas, the earliest stages, to actually shipping them in production and getting feedback on them. <clears throat> and between those two steps, there is a lot that happens. Uh, traditionally, you, you have many tools to do this. 
What we've done with GitLab is we try to ship in a single package this entire workflow for you so that everything you do, you can do within GitLab while collaborating with your colleagues. It's our goal to ship all 10 steps this year. Um, our first release of Psychoanalytics has brought us one step closer to meeting this goal. So what do we mean by the 10 step of the ID2 production flow? Um, for instance, to cover the idea stage, GitLab shipped with uh, Mattermost, an open source self-hosted Slack alternative. Uh, you can plan what you will create with GitLab issues and GitLab issue boards that we've actually shipped last month. You can code right in your browser with our powerful integration with coding, which is like this amazing on steroids IDE uh, with a terminal inside your browser. There is no need. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you can test your code with our continuous integration platform built right into GitLab. No need for Travis or Circle CI anymore. Uh, you can do code review with the merge request and our newly merge config feature that now works in the browser. Uh, there is no need anymore to use the terminal to merge conflicts between branches. You will also soon be able to automate all your tasks with a new Slack bot and COG integration. And finally, Psych Analytics tells you how much time each one of these stages take so your team can improve on each one of them. We've already shipped the majority of this list and we cannot wait to ship the remaining phases. And without any further ado, let's take a look at uh, some highlights from our 8.12 release. So we are super happy to have launched the merge request versions, a highly requested feature. So what does this feature do? Well, um, when you are pushing more than a single commit to a merge request, um, it can be hard to view uh, what changed between versions and the target branch. From now on, every time you push a commit to a merge request, a new version of this merge request is created. That means you can view the previous states of a merge request. This allows you to compare between a previous commit and the target branch, or even between versions, showing you what has changed between certain commits. Merge request versions is a simple <clears throat> new tool that will help teams to better collaborate on the code. And that leads to the next feature that we've released uh, in this release which is um, the, the, the global code search. <clears throat> so this, is, this was also uh, a, another very um, highly requested feature. Uh, it's one of these um, features that seems small because uh, it appears to be just a, like a new tab in the search results page, but it's actually very complex to build and it's something very huge for big teams. So uh, before, if you ran Elasticsearch on your uh, EE instance, you could already search issues, commit messages, merge request names across all your projects. But now you, but, but you could only search a specific piece of code in one project, not across all the projects that you have in your instance. Well, with uh, 8.12 and this new feature, now you can. It's amazing. And, um, Psych Analytics is a, a major new feature that we've released uh, this release. It's the newest addition to the set of tools GitLab provides to teams. Uh, so let me just share my screen to show you in practice how that works. All right. So I hope everyone can see my screen now. Um, so Psych Analytics tells you how long it takes uh, your team to go from ID to production on each of their projects. It's easy to think that you're shipping quickly as a team, but issue can get stuck at the specific stage. Without met metrics and a high level overview of progress, we just don't know how long it takes to move from stage to stage, uh, making it much harder to identify why something stalled. Psych Analytics is a way to prevent this from happening by giving you the data you need to make better decisions and work better as a team. So. Uh, how, how do we know how to measure that? Well, at GitLab here, we are in a unique position. We actually have all the tools used by teams to ship something, as we've seen in, in the last slide. Um, we know when people create an issue, when they submit their first commit based on this issue, when they test this code, and when they push it to production. We know everything. And we can link all this and display the relevant metrics. And this is all possible because we have one integrated tool set centralized in one data store. So th there are three things that you have to know about this new feature. Um, the first one is that Psych Analytics is a measure 
uh, of how long it takes the team to complete the cycle. Therefore, we only track cycle time on issues that have been deployed to production. This is important. Secondly, you have to follow GitLab flow in order for Cycle Analytics to track every stage. And, and finally, Cycle Analytics uses your GitLab CI configuration file to understand which environment is set to production. For Cycle Analytics to track your cycle time, you will need to configure GitLab CI. It's uh, monetary, unfortunately. So how do we actually measure everything? Let's take a few examples uh, out of this real uh, example here, as, as you can see on the screen. So the issue stage, uh, which is the, the first stage, is the median time from issue creation until this issue is given a milestone or a list label. The second stage uh, will measure the time from assigning an issue to a milestone or moving it to a list on the issue board to pushing the first commit. And for psychoanalytics to track this time, your commit, your commit message must include the issue closing pattern, like closing dash x, where x is the issue number related to this commit. The third stage, is the, which is the code stage, represents the median time from the first commit to creating the merge request. Then we have the test phase, which is the median of the time CI takes to run every build for the related merge request. We have a bunch of other stages as well, and the, the final stage is the it's a production stage. This is the sum of all time taken to run the entire process from issue creation to deploying the code to production. Um, by the way, everything is documented thoroughly in the, in the documentation. So uh, if you want to follow this flow, everything is documented as you, you can do it right now in your projects. <coughs> all right, I stopped sharing my screen. Um, so, um, just need to <laughs> move to the next slide, sorry about that. So to sum up, we have, um, we have released uh, two exciting features uh, in 8.12, Cycle Analytics and Global Code Search. Cycle Analytics tracks the time from an ID to production. Um, you're required to use GitLab flow to properly function and it uses issue closing patterns and your CI configuration. And the second feature is global code search, which is about searching all the code in all your projects using Elasticsearch. If something exists in your GitLab instance, it is not searchable. It's just great. At, at GitLab, we've been uh, releasing a new version every, every 20 seconds of every month. That means we never stop shipping new features and improving the product. As a matter of fact, we've already started to work on 8.13 and later, actually. So what's next? First is Psychoanalytics V2. Uh, we won't stop at what we've uh, already shipped. Uh, we actually want to view, data, view delta between cycles. So basically, this is, um, uh, we, we will show you the current, cycle, the, the, the current cycle and how this current cycle compares to the previous cycle. Something like uh, you are performing 5% better than last time for the code for the code stage. Uh, you will be able to see a feed of events per stage. So for instance, uh, the issue stage would show all the issues that have been created uh, in this time range. And uh, we'll also ship some small design enhancements too. We are also working on something very exciting, uh, enhancements for the issue board. Uh, we've, we've shipped the issue board feature on 8.11. The community went absolutely crazy about it, so we will iterate a lot on it. Uh, we are planning to have uh, multiple issue boards per project soon, as well as uh, at the group level. We will also ship review apps. A uh, review app uses your settings defined in your CI and is basically a live version of your app that we create for every merge request. I think it's amazing. Every time you create a merge request, you will have a button to launch your app with the code contained in the merge request and actually play with it and see immediately uh, what uh, how the change that you've made affects the version. We will also ship Slack integration. So uh, Slack integration is about having the chap ops concept in GitLab. It's about talking to a bot in Slack to execute the tasks you want to achieve, such as deploying to production, assign a task to someone, or whatever that is scriptable. We'll also improve the merge complete resolution a lot. Um, and uh, finally, we will give some love to our merge Sorry, we'll give some love to our merge request feature by showing the deployment activity next on each merge request screen. Um, 
Thanks for listening to me. I hand the mic now to Erica for a round of uh, Q&A. Thanks, Regis. That was great. Um, so we have a couple of questions that have come through. Um, the first one being for you, Regis, can I use cycle analytics even if I don't use Git GitLab Flow? Um, if not, do I have to change the entire way I work in order to use this feature, or how would I get started? Uh, okay, um, the the basic answer is uh, no. <laughs> so you have to follow GitLab Flow to use Cycle Analytics. Um, why? Uh, well, uh, because people have uh, so many different ways of working. They have so many different processes, so many different workflows. So it, it's it's just impossible for us to measure every step of the process if you don't follow a very specific flow. Uh, so on, on the product side, we try to avoid having settings when we can, because th that makes this, the product simpler to use for everyone. And Psych Analytics is one of these features where we really don't want to have settings because that will be extremely complex for the user, but also for us to actually calculate everything. Um, this is why we, need, we, we, we require people to follow a very specific flow so we can actually track and measure everything. Otherwise, it's, it's just impossible. But that, that being said, um, the best way to start is to follow the documentation. Actually, you know, uh, making Psych Analytics work is not super complex per se. You just have to follow some stuff. And it should not require to change your entire way of working, by the way, you know. Uh, so basically to start, you just need to push a commit with the issue number on an issue that already exists in your project. And, uh, and also make sure that your CI is configured with the production environment and you are good to go. It will work. Awesome. Um, Thanks for that um, yep. great explanation. Um, we have another question that came in. Um, it says, why is global code an EE feature only, and how do you decide to make something EE only? Yeah, it's fair. Um, that's a good question. Uh, so when we make new features, we ask ourselves, um, is this feature more relevant for organizations that have more than 100 potential users? If the answer is yes, then the feature is likely to be exclusive to EE. So this is the, our, our answer for uh, this kind of questions. However, uh, global code search is one of these features uh, because we think you are more likely to have a lot of repositories and have the need to, <coughs> Sorry, and, and the need to search code in all those repos um, is much more uh, something that big or medium-sized companies will want to do. So um, this is why we, we, we wanted to have this feature only for E. Great. Thanks again for another great explanation. Um, so that was all the questions that we had come through. Um, and really quick, we just wanted to announce that GitLab is going on a world tour. We're going to be making stops in London, New York City, Amsterdam, um, and then we will be wrapping up the tour in San Francisco with a user conference in February. So if you take a look at the resources section, there's a link to the blog post that gives you more information. Um, and go ahead and check that out because it's going to be really, really awesome. Um, and with that, I just want to thank you all for joining us today. The recording and slides will be made available to you. Um, again, we will send that to everybody that's registered via email, and then we will also link to them from our blog. Um, and with that, thanks again, and everybody have a great day.